Okay, we're in the NDT room here at Turbines. Uh, on this side of the room, this is where I do the die penetrant inspections, which is required by Pratt. Um, what it consists of is using different levels of die, different sensitivities for different parts. We, we use a, for the lower stuff, um, one of the SPOPs, the spots you're allowed to use for lower grade sensitivity stuff, we use water wash. So uh, one of the first steps we do is we come in here um, when the part's clean, being media blasted and degreased. And this is just for uh, educational purposes. So the parts are all clean. Right here I have ZL60D. I have a container over down here. Um, this is what's rated for medium sensitivity. It's what we use on the majority of everything except for rotor group stuff, which has to have a high sensitivity and a lot of other stuff. So, so you begin by spraying it and applying it to the part. I have a combustion liner here that as you can see it's been sprayed. It's been sitting here for a while and I have a large desic duct which has been sprayed on the inside and it's already started to run down in there. Um, so yeah, we would normally start by spraying the entire part from top to bottom very thoroughly. Other methods are dip tank method, but it's, you use a lot more dye. And uh, you have to make sure that the dye stays clean. So you risk contamination and having to throw away a bunch of the unused dye that you only used once or twice. Okay, so that part's sitting. This part's ready to be rinsed. So on the rinse side of things, per the spec that we, that I'm certified under for our Magnaflux and dye penetrant, the water wash system has to be done at a designated pressure and a designated temperature. So we have readouts and gauges and everything in here to, that are calibrated to tell us the temperature of the water, which has to be, I think it's a max of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Water pressure, uh, we generally run at about 20. You can be a little bit higher than that. I think 40 is the max. Per So once the water starts to warm up, we're going to rinse the part off thoroughly. Okay, now I'm going to go over there where you are. I'm just going to set this over here. Set this on this area to kind of sit there and drip dry. Having a designated area like this, a dark room that we made in here, definitely makes it easier. You can do it. Uh, there's different dyes and powders you can use for daylight, um, but having a nicer setup like this uh, makes it a lot easier. You're allowed, you're able to get the room darker for more accurate results. But it is required um, on an overhaul level to do NDT on just about every part. There are, you know, exceptions, but there is a lot of stuff that requires dye penetrant or Magnaflux. So. Because there legitimately is a giant crack right there. 
<laughs> That's why it's pulling water out. I don't think it's gonna even go out because it's so big. It will if I get it dry. <laughs> no, right there. This large duck is cracked in a couple spots. It's still got water coming out, but it's pretty obvious. This is our, U, our black UV light that has to be tested every day for the black light intensity. Um, this is what we use to determine your cracks. Normally the lights are not off or not on, but these cracks in this particular part are so obvious in the water. There's a lot of water in there. So what this part, what we'll end up doing with this part is it'll go and get put in an oven to dry out the moisture inside here and then it'll go through our repair side of the building and get fixed. Okay, so if this was off, the idea is to have, in a perfect world, get it absolutely as clean as possible so you don't have a lot of this residual greening everywhere. Uh, so like in a perfect world, it would be you know absolutely clean and all that you would see would be a crack or a defect. Like on the outside back here, as you can see, the dye will continue to bleed out through the cracks exposing them, but in this particular case, we have a lot of excessive water. It really just, I mean, it's gonna point out like surface breaks and irregularities. If you have, a lot of the time you can generally see these cracks before it gets to this stage of dye penetrant. You still do the dye penetrant, but a lot of times, like you can see this crack with the naked eye along this seam weld, which is a pretty common place for these large ducts to crack. And by putting dye on there, the dye is going to go into the crack. And once you rinse it, you rinse off all the excessive dye. What you have left is a clean surface like this. And then you put your developer on and the developer kind of blots the dye out of the crack to expose it. But in this, this certain instance, these cracks are pretty big and obvious. Right now, I'm just gonna mark these so that when I take it over to be fixed, the welder can see and identify what we need to be fixing easier instead of having to go over there and point them out. I'm just marking the areas that are cracked. Another reason is uh, you're only allowed so many, so many cracking, so much cracking and cracks along the seam weld. So it's a good idea to kind of mark them. That gives you an easier way to kind of measure everything and make sure they're not too long or too much or not enough solid parent material in between. So this is definitely a good case that we could fix and that's what we'll do. Generally, a lot of shops uh, usually have to send this kind of stuff out because they don't have the right certified guy doing the welding or the right equipment. So having it all available to us makes the process a lot faster and more efficient. Plus, uh, being on a scale where I can go over and talk to him and he can come over and talk to me, you know, on a you know basis like that, it makes a lot of, you know a lot faster and easier instead of having to like call the place you sent it to and you know say hey I got it back and it's not right or call and say I need this this and this done it's a lot easier I can look it up I know the spec you know per the man I can go over and show him what it needs tell him what it needs he can fix it 
bring it back, we'll recheck it, same process all over again and ensure that it's good and then once we're good and we know it's all good to go and the part's good and it passes the NDT portion of the inspection and then it goes on to a dimensional, make sure nothing's kind of out of whack and if it has to be reworked, it gets reworked and if everything's good, then it's considered an overhauled condition part. This also makes our uh, turn times a lot faster. Like I said, being able to, to have a relationship with the guys over in the machine shop and the weld shop and go over there and take care of things, you know, firsthand, it makes the whole process a lot faster. We're not having to, uh, so you know, certain instances we do have to send some things out that we, we can't repair, we don't have the ability to do it, but for the most part, a lot of the things that we fix here, like this large duct is a very common piece, um, we can fix in-house, that makes the, you know, turn time on this part you know, we can, if you, if this got sent today, this would leave today. We can, we can turn these, these smaller, you know, stuff like this, we can turn around in a day. Uh, even a combustion liner, like you saw earlier, those are pretty fast turnaround stuff, mainly because of the setup we have here. It's set up to be fast and very accurate. 